One of the most popular programs anywhere in America, a real grassroots, downright salt of the earth program is Hee Haw. And one of the people responsible for it, he's a writer for it, helped organize it, is our guest tonight. You may not recognize him because he looks so classy in a velvet jacket, but this is Gordy Tapp. And he plays the part of Clem, the storekeeper, the old seven, philosopher, the old philosopher, the drunk at the table with my wife, Laverne. Uh, yeah, I play six different characters on the show. That's all. I get a chance to sing. You met another, and you was gone, as well as gloom, despair, and agony on me. Now you don't look like that kind of a guy who punctuates his song with Bronx cheers. No, I really don't. But listen, uh, you know the old story, Milty. You. Uh, do what you have to to earn a buck. <laughs> you did help organize Hee Haw years ago. Yeah, in the beginning, uh, I was lucky enough to go out and had, having worked with a lot of the people from Nashville, the people in Hollywood weren't familiar with them, and, and so I made recommendations for some of the people we used. In fact, a goodly portion, like Grandpa Jones, uh, Archie Campbell, Minnie Pearl, uh, String Bean, the people that came to us from the Nashville area. What's your view of humor? Now, what's your idea uh, of, of, uh, of a Gordy Tap? funny story, I mean, that really expresses your own sense of humor. Well, uh, like uh, your, your city of uh, Louisville, it's, it is so friendly. Now, I'll, I know that because I was at the uh, Oxmoor Mall uh, yesterday, and uh, I found a man's hand in my pocket. Now, that's got to be friendly. I said, uh, what are you doing? He said, I'm only changing a quarter. Well, I said, why didn't you ask me? He said, I never speak to strangers. <laughs> Now, that's country humor, and I like that. I think that's that's easy. And humor. everybody can relate to that's it. That's right. Now, yeah. you write a lot of stuff for some of the other uh, people yeah, on the show. Yeah, about a, a quarter of the show, I get the pleasure to write. I just finished. In fact, coming down on the airplane, I just wrote the last of what we call wild lines. That's where Lulu gets in trouble, and I come on, and I say, Oh, come on, Lulu, don't worry. Come on and sit down beside me. There are two chairs over here. You know, that sort of thing. It's just... Keeps How about the humor going. people like Lulu and uh, and Junior, for instance, who's one of a kind, isn't he? Oh, definitely one of a kind. <laughs> Junior is not stupid. Don't misunderstand him. He's uh, he's uh, he's foxy. Uh, Junior is not. Well, let us say. He doesn't play with all his marbles. He's got them, yeah. but he doesn't use them. He all. doesn't. I, need there them. are times that I don't think he does. But I love him, and he's a sweet, generous guy. Did you know? Did you have any idea when you started he Haw? that it would be the sensational and nationwide success it eventually turned well, out to be. I, I don't think any, any one of us foresaw that. But I had a great deal of faith in it, Milty, right from the very beginning. When I saw the first takes off, I said, gosh, this thing has got to go because it's so, it's so people-oriented. Yeah. You can sit and look at it, and if there's something you don't like, wait. 30 seconds and there's something different. That's Am I right. right. Now you write some of the cornfield stuff? Oh yeah, a lot of cornfield. Do you write any of the barbershop material? I wrote two this three this time. Yeah. And uh, I have often gone to Archie and in fact, uh, uh, do you remember the one about Mel Famey, the uh, the baseball pitcher? You know, the that made Mel Famey walk. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. So the, well, the was, pun, I right. took that Did you for do Archie that one? and uh, I didn't write it originally. No, I'm not claiming that. Well, go ahead, sell it. Go on. I and I to took go. him. I took him the one where I come in with the with the gun to hold him up, and uh, he wants to he wants to give me an IOU, and I hand him the gun while he signs it. All that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, we all, we all get together and we throw ideas around, and it's fun. Right, you know, what are your accents? What are you? Well, I can do probably about uh, ten accents. Uh, I do the English accent, of course. Doing accents is not just doing accents, because in England alone you must have 50 or 60 yes. different accents. And of course I do Scottish, and I've worked at that for a lot of years. I go over to Europe twice, twice uh, or once every two years, and I take a tape recorder, and I go into a place like Ireland, and I sit down and I listen to them talk, and when I do, I tape it all, and then I bring it home and work on it. So that, And I think the secret of, of a good dialect is not trying to do it so broadly, just make it modern and people will appreciate it. I love it, Cordy. Love thank it you too. very much. It's a pleasure. It's great to have you on our channel. May too. I say how wonderful it is to be here, not only for Cosair Hospital and for Foster, but for the people of Louisville. They have been so wonderful. Going around the golf course today, they're stopping and giving us beers. Cue it over to Faith. Cue, oh, Faith, will you take over? I think Milty and I have had it long enough. <laughs> Thanks a million. Thank you.